Thank you, Laurie and Candy. Uh, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 10. We're going to be looking at the last passage in Mark chapter 10 this morning, verses 46 through 52. Um, before we get started, let me just say again how excited I am, we are, that uh, we're coming back to uh, congregational worship next Sunday morning. And as we said last Sunday, and as Barry reiterated this morning, uh, there's going to be rules. Now, uh, we're not going to require, require masks. We're going to have them. Strongly encourage you to wear one. Um, but um, um, instead of that, we've really, listen, we really, really, really have to practice social distancing. And I know, I know that you want to come 
and, and, and hug me. And if I were you, I'd want to do that too. But you can't. You have to stay away. You have to stay six to eight feet away from me and away from other people. Listen, this virus, it, listen, this virus is a real and present danger. I'm praying for someone right now who's fighting for their life with COVID-19. I know people who have this disease and who have had it. So uh, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. So, so next Sunday and next several Sundays, uh, things are going to be different. And just respect that. Um, six to eight feet in uh, distance apart. Remember that. Um, all right. Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 46. Now they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for what we've already experienced here today. And Father, we pray your blessings upon the reading and the preaching, and the hearing of your word. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I heard a story about a receptionist at a dental office. And it was, it was her job, one of her jobs was to remind um, patients, to call patients and remind them of their appointment. You've had um, that telephone call yourself to remind you of your appointment. Well, um... One man called her very early in the morning. His appointment was that morning, and he said, um, I'm running about 20, 25 minutes late. That's not going to be a problem, is it? And she thought to herself, yes, that's going to be a big problem. She thought to herself, um, that's going to put us behind about 30 minutes all day long. And this is early in the morning, so this may make people wait uh, an hour later in the day. But she didn't say that. She said, no, it'll be no problem at all, sir. It'll just mean we won't have time to give you an anesthetic. Uh, well, he was on time for his appointment. You know, sometimes we think we're in a bigger hurry than we really are. You know what? A dose of patience can go a long way. And we're going to need a dose of patience starting next Sunday. Remember that. We're going to have to be patient. Well, a dose of patience can go a long, long way. We said two weeks ago that Mark 10.45 is the central verse, the key verse to the entire gospel. Jesus said, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Listen, no one, no one was ever more busy than Jesus. Think about it. He came to provide salvation to the world, and he only had 
a three-year window of time to do all that work. And he squeezed all of that work, the salvation of the world, into a three-year window of time. Well, in this passage, as Jesus was making his way to Jerusalem for his last Passover feast on earth, as busy as he was, he took time to tend to a blind man's needs. And what was a short layover, a short stop for Jesus, changed a man's life. It was a life-changing experience for Bartimaeus. And you know what? Jesus Christ is still in the business of changing lives. So slow down. Just slow down, chill out, consider the priorities of your life. Some of us have our priorities out of order this morning. Slow down. Remember Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all of this stuff will be added unto us. Remember, the key word in that verse is first. So let's reflect upon our priorities this morning. We're not as busy as we think we are. And so don't miss life. And don't miss the importance of life, the important things of life because of the busyness of life. So what can we learn about priorities from the story of blind Bartimaeus. We're going to look at three important truths about priorities in our time together this morning. Look first at see hope. See hope. Look at verses 46 through 48. Now, they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Did you know that the fact that Mark would give Bartimaeus' father's name means that Bartimaeus was well known, was well known. Everybody knew the story of Bartimaeus. Um, He was well known in New Testament times. That's why the name of his father is given here. Um, It wasn't just some blind man. It was Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. And he sat by the road begging because that's what he did. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Look, he didn't cry out one time. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. So get the picture. As Jesus, his disciples, and a great multitude were leaving the city of Jericho, a blind man named Bartimaeus was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming, he shouted, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now let me just tell you, this is one of the great passages in the Bible. I mean, a pastor could preach a hundred sermons from this one passage. It is just that rich. It's one of the great passages of the Bible. So there are several things to consider here, and we're not going to consider all of them. We just don't have time. But first, someone must have told, remember, blind Bartimaeus, that Jesus was coming. And second, Bartimaeus believed. He believed that Jesus could change his life. So he wasn't wasn't about 
to allow Jesus to get by without hearing him. Listen, Bartimaeus was blind Bartimaeus. Nothing was wrong with his mouth. Nothing was wrong with his ears. He could hear fine. And he could speak perfectly. And he had volume to his voice. So he called Jesus, son of David. That's interesting. That's significant. This title for Jesus, son of David, is used only two times in Mark's gospel. Here and in Mark 12, 35 where Jesus used it about himself. There the Bible says, Then Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, How is it that the scribes say that the Christ is the Son of David? So Son of David is clearly a messianic term. And just note, blind Bartimaeus said it before Jesus said it. He said it in chapter 10. Jesus said it in chapter 12. So it's clearly a messianic term. And when they told Bartimaeus to keep quiet, what did he do? He didn't. He raised his voice. Son of David, have mercy on me. Now in effect, Blind Bartimaeus was saying the same thing that the demons said in Mark chapter 1. Listen to Mark 1, verses 23 and 24. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. It's so interesting that according to Mark's gospel, the first character that recognizes that Jesus is God and that he is the Messiah is not a sinner, is not a saint, but a demon. That's significant and that's important. And the people here in the story of blind Bartimaeus called Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. That title is only used five times in Mark's gospel. Once by the demons, once by the people in this passage, and only three other times in the passage. So when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming, he knew who he was. Jesus, son of David. You see, blind, blind Bartimaeus understood what the disciples didn't. He knew Jesus is the Messiah. He knew there is hope in his name. A blind man or a blind person in the first century, is the very picture of hopelessness. If you want to see what hopelessness looks like, look at a blind person in the first century. It's hard to imagine a more hopeless situation. So Bartimaeus is one of the great stewards of the Bible. He just is. He's one of the great stewards of the Bible. He was a great steward of, of his circumstances. Even after, even after they told him to be quiet, hey, hey, Bartimaeus, tone it down. Tone it down. What did he do? He cried out all the louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Look, Bartimaeus was not going to be denied. He was not going to miss his opportunity. You know what? If they have flag football in heaven... I want Bartimaeus on my team. Okay, you can pick yours. I'm picking Bartimaeus and that dude in John chapter 9. I want those guys on my team. You can have Samson. 
I want Bartimaeus. Because here's a guy that won't quit. Here's a guy with heart. He's one of the great stewards of the Bible. He was a great steward of his time, a great steward of his circumstances. And listen, a great steward of his opportunity. This was his opportunity to be healed. And he was not going to miss it. It just wasn't going to happen. He wasn't going to miss it. Bartimaeus knew who Jesus is. He was a blind man who could see hope. Well, look secondly at hear hope. See hope, hear hope. Look at verses 49 and 50. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man and said to him, Be of good cheer. Rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Bartimaeus cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says, Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. You know what Jesus was doing there? Oh, he's doing a lot of things. I told you you could preach a hundred sermons. He was doing a lot of things. But one of the things he was doing was he was using Bartimaeus to give us an object lesson on prayer. Listen to Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 5. And he and Jesus said to them, to his disciples, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, Though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and him who who knocks, it will be opened. See, God blesses persistent prayer. Bartimaeus wasn't just knocking. Hey, he was banging. He was about to break the door down. So listen, pray like that. Pray like that. Pray like your life depends on it. Because guess what? It does. It does. There's power in prayer. There's great power in prayer. So pray like that. Pray like Bartimaeus. Pray to be heard by God. Be persistent. Be tenacious. When Bartimaeus heard Jesus, he heard hope. Hey, he heard hope. When he heard that Jesus was near, he heard hope. And nothing was going to keep him from Jesus. He was persistent. He was tenacious. You know what? If we really believe that Jesus Christ can change our life, then nothing can keep us from Him. Nothing. Not anybody, not anything. So Bartimaeus didn't just believe that Jesus could change his life. The Bible says, James says, even the demons believe and shudder in fear. Bartimaeus didn't just believe that Jesus could change his life, he knew it. And the evidence is here in verse 50. The evidence is right here. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. This miracle story, or variation of it, is found in all three of the synoptic gospels. Mark is the only one that mentions the garment. Now Mark was referring to the cloak or to the outer garment. 
And understand, that one item was the most valuable thing Bartimaeus owned. No question. It was the most valuable thing he had on earth. During the daytime, he would spread out his cloak before him, wearing only his tunic, and people would drop their alms, or their offerings onto his cloak, and then he would collect them, and that's how he made his money to live. And then at night, he would take his cloak and he would wrap up in it, and he would keep them warm. A cloak was necessary for survival. And what does verse 50 say? Bartimaeus threw his aside. And hey, remember, he was blind. So where did he put it? He couldn't see. He was blind. And clothing was extremely valuable in the first century. Someone would have picked it up in no time. Because it was that valuable. Clothing was important. And there was no such thing as insurance. He couldn't file a claim. So he knew Jesus is the Messiah. But in the world's eyes, he did a very foolish thing. He abandoned his most valuable material possession. So Mark tells us that to tell us that nothing in this world was going to keep Bartimaeus from Jesus because he knew Jesus had the power to change his life. Listen, Bartimaeus understood the moment. That's wisdom. Friend, do you understand the moment? Do you understand how important this time is right now? To sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his word. Bartimaeus understood the moment. When he heard Jesus, he heard hope. And there was nothing in the world that was going to keep him from Jesus. So, what's keeping Jesus from being the priority of your life? Huh. Huh. What's keeping Jesus from being the priority of your life? Listen, don't allow anything or anyone to become more important than Jesus Christ. Well, let's move on. Choose hope. Choose hope. Look at verses 51 and 52. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately, that's Mark's favorite word, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. What an interesting question. What an interesting question. Jesus asked blind Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? What an interesting question. You know what? We just finished a 24-hour period of emphasis, a prayer emphasis, a very intense prayer for me at least, a beautiful time. And yesterday, as I was praying, as I was crying out to the Lord, the Lord spoke to me very clearly, very profoundly. Hey, and I know His voice. And he asked me that question. What do you want me to do for you? Ask yourself that question. 
What do you want Jesus to do for you? Ask yourself that question. How would you answer it? How would you answer that question? What do you want me to do for you? Well, Jesus didn't ask Bartimaeus that question to get information. He asked Bartimaeus that question to to give Bartimaeus opportunity. He asked Bartimaeus to answer that question to give Bartimaeus center stage in Jericho. The center stage that Bartimaeus had been begging for. But another reason Jesus asked that question was to give Bartimaeus the opportunity to state his request in his own words. You know, the best way for us to understand something is to put it in our own words. And blind Bartimaeus was the only person in the entire world that could truly answer that question. That's why when a person prays to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, it must be their words. I can't ask Jesus into your heart. You can't repent of my sin. And I can't repent of your sin. I can't give your life to my Savior. It has to be our words. It has to be personal. That's why we as Baptists stress a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It must be. Because no one can make that decision but you. But the answer that Bartimaeus gave is just as interesting as the question that Jesus asked. He answered, Rabbi, that I may, re- that I may receive my sight. Now, that's interesting. Because this is only this is one of only two times in the Bible this word rabbi is used. The only other time is when Mary Magdalene recognized Jesus after he rose from the dead in John chapter 20. And it means my master or my Lord. And it's a very, very personal way of addressing Jesus. So three titles of Jesus are mentioned in this little story. Jesus of Nazareth, Son of David, and Rabbani. And of course, all three are on purpose. And the order in which they're given is also on purpose. The terms start from the human, move to the divine, and settle on the personal. Jesus of Nazareth is the name of a person, like Barry of Taylor's. It just helps identify a person. Son of David is a gigantic term. That's divine. But Rabbani is a personal, very personal, very intimate term. Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? My Lord, I want to see. And then look what Jesus said. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Literally, a literal translation is Jesus said, go your way, your faith has made you safe. We translate that word to well to make it flow better with the sentence. But it means, go your way, your faith has saved you. It's the word we use for salvation. So Jesus said, go go wherever you want, Bartimaeus. Go your way. A wonderful thing has happened right here today. My grace and your faith has met, and the result is you have a brand new life. 
So go your way. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. So Bartimaeus says, well, you know what? If I can go anywhere I want, I'd just soon go with you, Jesus. I would just as soon go with you. And this is the last passage in Mark's gospel before the triumphal entry, before Holy Week. And friends, that's on purpose. This is Mark's way of saying, as Jesus was making his final approach to the cross, he finally found a disciple that got it. Finally. And he was a blind beggar. Someone who had not only heard of Jesus of Nazareth, but was dying to meet him. Someone who truly understood that Jesus is the Christ. And someone who recognized that Jesus the Christ is Lord. My Lord. So if you're a Christian, listen. If you're a Christian, you're just like Bartimaeus. I'm just like Bartimaeus. We were once blind. But praise God, now we see. Jesus has given to us a brand new life. Now, what we do with that life is our choice. Just like Jesus told Bartimaeus, you can go your own way. Or we can be like Bartimaeus and we can follow Jesus. And I'll just tell you, for a long time, far too long in my life, as a Christian, I was saved when I was 12. I didn't read a book of the Bible until I was 20 or older. For, lo for far too long in my life, I went my own way. I went my own way. But listen, the extent of my commitment to Christ was to show up for church most Sundays at 11 o'clock and warm a pew for an hour. That was my service to the King of Kings. And I felt good about that. Because at least I came to more services than I missed. Hey, I even went through periods in my life when I didn't even show up at all. For weeks or for months. And I know, hey, I'm a preacher. I know that church attendance doesn't get us to heaven. But I've never known a strong follower of the Lord Jesus Christ that was not a member of a church and was not committed to the ministry of the church. That's why it's so important that we're involved in the ministry of the church. Hey, we need the church and the church needs us. And that's why it's a good thing that we've had this time to realize just how important church is. Because you figured it out. Watching it on TV or watching it on the computer is just not the same as being there. So God has truly blessed us with this time away by reminding us of the importance of church in the life of a born-again follower of Jesus. No one is going to follow us or force us to follow Jesus or to grow closer to Jesus. That is clearly, simply our choice. But here's the fact. Jesus Christ came to give his life as ransom for many. He came to change the world, and he did. And he does that one life at a time. So the only question that matters is has he changed your life? Has he changed you? Think about that question. Jesus asks, and he's asking you right now, what is it that you want me to do for you? How would you answer that question? 
Now you've got one shot. How would you answer that question? And if he's changed your life, are you going to go your own way? Or are you going to be like Bartimaeus and follow Jesus? Let's pray. Father, we come before you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your grace, your amazing grace. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of second chances, third chances, fifth chances. We thank you that you're patient with us. We pray that we'll be patient with one another, even patient with ourselves. Father, we thank you for this story. We thank you for Bartimaeus. We thank you for everything about him. We thank you, Lord, for his blindness so that he might see one day. We thank you for his tenacity. We thank you most of all for his genuine faith, for his example. Father, speak to us. Because we need your wisdom to answer that haunting question. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Give us the wisdom to answer that question. Give us the faith to follow you, to seek you first in our lives. Father, we love you. We confess we are nothing apart from you, and we need you. And we'll pray this in all things, in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. If you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus, the answer to that question that Jesus asked Barnabas is, is very simple. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want you to save me. And that's what happened to Bartimaeus that day. He got saved. Your faith has made you safe. If you've never prayed to receive Jesus, give your life to him today. Call the church, 242-3805, and someone will lead you to a personal faith relationship with Jesus Christ. Remember, it's got to be your decision. It can't be your mama's or your grandmother's. It has to be your decision. So call and someone will help you and walk you through a prayer. Pray you through a prayer where you can come into relationship to God, with God Almighty. Or maybe you are a Christian, but you've gone your own way. Maybe you can identify with my testimony. Well, you've gone long enough and far enough. Turn around, repent, come home. Come home, come back to God. Come back to God. God wants you to come home. God wants you to follow Him. Because it's the best plan for your life. God wants us to be obedient. Call the church for prayer. 864-242-3805. Maybe, you know what, this morning, maybe you just need someone to pray with. Just call. We'll pray with you. Thank you for visiting with us today. Barry's going to come and close us.
join me as we close in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time that you've uh, given us, God. Um, God, show us how we can be obedient. Show us how we can serve you. Direct our paths, Lord. Your plan is better than ours. God, we thank you that you care enough about us to lead us to salvation and then through that to lead us to a life worth living. We praise you for your goodness and your holiness, God. And we pray for whatever it is we need, God. You know better than us. Lord, continue to be with us and walk with us uh, during these times and give us wisdom, give us opportunities to take the gospel to a lost and dying world. Lord, be with us, keep us safe, Lord, and, and bless us with all spiritual blessings as we look forward to an opportunity to worship together face to face, all the while longing for the, for the day that we get to worship you face to face in eternity. And we lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen.